All right. Hello and welcome back. And thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today for this new webinar all about emotional intelligence and your bottom line. And the way I look, figure it is, you know, right now, pretty much everybody needs whatever help they can get in uh, getting to that next reality, you know, getting to that next step in business growth. So today we've got a whopper of a show for you today or webinar. I'm so used to doing my own, um, building my own shows on my YouTube channel. And I was just had a conversation yesterday with a, a major podcast platform. And so we're negotiating, rolling my show over to that platform. So I've got show on the brain right now. And uh, so I see some people saying hello. So um, let's see, El Massa from Dubai. Wow, thank you for joining us today. I know you're 11 hours ahead of us, so it's kind of late at night. And um, glad to have you here. I had a, the pleasure of having a really nice meeting with, with you a couple weeks ago, and I'd love to schedule those next steps so we can start cultivating some business expansion together. And, and I love Dubai, I can't wait to get back and spend some time there. All right, so let's get going. And um, maybe what we could do, so we've got some more comments. Let me just take a moment and uh, so I, yes, inshallah, is that a pronunciation? I'm not sure what that is. So you're gonna have to give me more. You have to give me more information on that. All right, so today is all about emotional intelligence and a whole other host of intelligences that nobody ever really talks about. And it's something that I teach to my, my clients all the time because I feel that it's really critical to have as much of an arsenal <laughs> of tools to to be able to create the success you want to create in your life so today i'm going to give you an overview of some of these other intelligences so you can kind of wet your whistle and get a sense of what you could be applying to your business growth that maybe you haven't thought of yet and so i'm excited about this because this is a toolbox that i absolutely love now where is my no where's my where's my tool my here it is okay i gotta move you out of the way there we go okay so today i'm going to cover off what is emotional intelligence how is it applicable in the growth of your business here's and i think we talked a little bit about this last time right christos where um or at least I talked about it to myself in my mind. <laughs> Not really sure, sometimes that happens. Um, so a lot of times there's this separation in people's mindsets in, that are in business that this kind of stuff is really it's not about business, it's about you as a person and you know, we don't need to be talking about that at work. It's just like get to work and get things done and execute, execute, execute. And where's the results? Where's, where, where's the money kind of thing? Like show me the money. <laughs> and um, so I always like to bridge the gap between that mindset of, okay, here you are over here as a, as a human being and you've got all this going on in your life. But then over here we have a business and the two, the two should, not be, should not be mixed together. And the truth of the matter is, and I, I feel like this is what we're waking up to dealing with this crazy situation we're in globally right now, is nothing could be further from the truth because how you feel is everything. And if you're not able to have a good relationship with yourself, 
if you're not able to understand yourself, how can you possibly deal with people? How could you possibly understand the person that is on your team or the people that are on your team or the client that's sitting in front of you? You just are so disconnected. So today we'll get into that in terms of how is it applicable in the growth of your business. And like I said, I've got a few other intelligences that I'm going to share with you today. And we're going to look at how that literally impacts your bottom line. And then also how that impacts your team performance. This part right here, this last bullet is so important because I hear so much dialogue around, you know, it's hard to find good people and it's hard to get my team to perform. And, you know, uh, the classic statement of, you know, these millennials, they don't want to work. And <laughs> these kinds of false premises, they're really a false premise. It really is about how you're able to connect with you and then your ability to attract the right people and to coach them where they need coaching and in terms of performance and let them go and run with it where they don't need your interference. Because if you're a smart business person, you're hiring people that are smarter than you. Because that's really what it's all about. It's about leveraging talent and skills that you don't necessarily have. You, you don't necessarily um, dig into because you have other fish to fry, as it were. So mental and emotional state management is really all about improving the bottom line, particularly when we're going through a global um, reset, we'll call it, and your ability to manage your emotions and manage your mindset and your thought patterns. Basically, these are new ways to be smart that I'm covering off with, with you today. So you might wanna grab that notepad and a pen and uh, make some notes on this. So this is a little bit about me. This, now this is what I haven't told you in previous webinars. You know, I've shared with you how I launched my business in, in Vancouver and you know, all the traveling around the world I've done and the speeches, but I grew up on a farm and most people don't know this. I mean, I, I was like, I was a farm girl, you know? I threw bales and built fences and helped cows have calves in the middle of the night with my mom and when it was like 30 below zero. And, you know, I barrel raced and I had chickens and I built my own tree house. And I stole my mom's best lumber and built my own treehouse. And I built my own raft and took it out on the dugout and went rafting. And, you know, I was like a Huck Finn kind of thing, right? You know, so I share that with you for a couple of reasons. First of all, I want you to have an understanding of what makes me tick. And an appreciate I have an appreciation and a reverence for growth, for planting of seeds, for the creation point within us all. Because when you're working with Mother Nature, everything is about creation. Your you roll with Mother Nature. You roll with the seasons. You plant. You literally plant seeds in the ground and you take care of them and you nurture them and, and you watch them grow and then you harvest them. And it's the same as with a business, you know, you take an idea and you plant it in the ground and, and that ground is, is a fertile soil of your mind and your emotions and your imagination. And then you bring that into the people that you align with and people show up to work with you and further your idea and grow the company on your teams and, and clients show up to, to buy your offering and, 
everybody's happy, right? Everybody gets to do what they love to do and you get to do what you love to do and your clients benefit because you're offering this to them. The other reason I wanna share the, this information about myself with you is to give you some scope of how everything I teach is applicable because of how far I've come in my growth and my development. I wouldn't be able to teach these tools if I didn't truly own them, if it wasn't really a reflection of my own, my own life journey and my own creative process of life. We are literally <laughs> creating our, our own next step through how we run our mind, which is what we're gonna get into today. So I took all that and, and developed programs that would enable business leaders to be able to move forward in their lives. Now, if you go over to my YouTube channel, and here's the, the, the tiny URL. If you go over to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. I'm looking to hit a thousand subscribers. And I, I don't want just any subscribers. I want subscribers like you that are really committed to creating the next level of thriving in your life and to do that from the inside out rather than masking it with the ego, I guess would be the easiest way to say because the ego likes to be satiated with material things and and profit margins and metrics and p ls but then there's the human spirit in you you know that really craves fulfillment and craves joy the joy of getting things done the creating of you know, this is our next offering. Let's build this out and let's take it to market and have fun in the process. So I do have new training courses that we're launching this month. I'm so thrilled about that. We've taken some of our former curriculum and we've revamped everything. And I'll share some of that with you after Christos um, presents today. And I know that he's got some really good stuff. So yeah, just a little bit of, you know, moving around the planet and taking it global and helping companies and working and partnering with organizations in different countries and different continents. It's, it's kind of like, you know, some people collect stamps <laughs> and uh, some people collect cars and I collect experiences in different countries and those experiences always revolve around my work and what I, what I absolutely love to do. And thank you for being here today because I absolutely love doing this. Like nothing could make me happier. And these are just a few brands that we've worked with and I can't fit them all on the page, but it gives you a sense of just the scope, you know, with people, I had this conversation, speaking of accountants, I had this conversation with uh, an accounting firm, a CPA firm, and we're doing some seminars together. They, they specialize in SMEs in the construction industry. And so we're having this dialogue around what I would create for these seminars. And they kept wanting to put me into this either or box. You know, is it this type of industry or this kind of industry? And I'm like, it's an and. So yes 17 countries four continents and a wide variety of industries so broad that it enables me to pick and bring nuggets from different industries into other industries as tools to be able to scale or become more effective or more efficient and otherwise i wouldn't be able to do that if i just had this like narrow niche of just it's just this one industry so Rigo cannot be with us today. I just got a message from him that his company uh, called a mandatory meeting. So we'll catch up with Rigo next week, which I'm going to share with you the topic of next week's web webinar at the end of this webinar. So it might be our last. I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm curious 
what you guys would like. Do you, would you guys like to have more of these? Because certainly have the content for it. Just let me know. Put something in the chat and let me know what your thoughts are. And, and let me know how this is helping you. I'd be very curious to know how this is helping you. So Christos is going to go into um, a really great topic today for teams. And maybe you could just unmute and tell us a little bit about your background so that um, people understand where you're coming from with this today. Yes, of course. Hello, everybody. Deborah, always exciting to be here with you. Uh, <laughs> so my background is, uh, I would say, uh, 20 years, more than 20 years in uh, technology solutions and working very closely with uh, small businesses and that mainly usually means the founders or the executive team in creating products and laun launching products and getting traction in the market. And of course, what we see a lot in those very small companies is that uh, the lack of a structure means that each person's personality, the, the, the way they think, their mindset, how they're feeling that day makes such an impact Mm. on the productivity of the team. So uh, we will talk a little bit about teamwork in alignment with what Deborah will be discussing today. I love it. That's fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much. And, um, and you're based in Manhattan, yeah? Yeah, that's correct. But you're from Greece. So tell us, I'd love to hear a little bit about that because we're going there in September. So yeah yeah so i mean greece uh, is a very beautiful country is the mother of democracy and the mother of greek drama which all greeks love to practice uh, <laughs> regularly <laughs> but uh, greece is going through a fantastic transition actually because they they went through uh, the financial problems that made headlines around the world for for a few years and that really pushed people beyond their comfort zone and their complacency into trying new things. And there is this surge of innovation and creativity and entrepreneurship that is popping up around Greece, which I personally find fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I'm very looking forward to Deborah and I visiting and bringing some know-how to, to the Greek ecosystem there. Yeah. So my gosh. So your people are coming to a new, a new level of awareness. They're waking up. Yeah. How exciting. It seems to be happening all over the world. <laughs> all right. So today I'm covering these topics around understanding essentially what makes a, a human being tick. Because when you understand what makes a human being tick, you understand what makes other people tick and you understand what makes you tick. So I'm gonna do a dive right now and get right into it. Right now is your opportunity to reinvent any or all aspects of your life and nothing could be more thrilling than having this opportunity. I've been just, I've been in such a state of appreciation around this because things that maybe you wouldn't have normally considered putting into motion in your business, you can now, you now have that time to make that consideration. And so let's get into the tools you're going to need to take those imaginings and turn them into tangible growth that has a highly positive impact on your profits. So first of all, I think we've all, we all know what intelligence is. We all know what IQ is. You know, it's the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. So, you know, if you have a high IQ, you can absorb a lot of information and you can repurpose it, let's call it that. So it's the collection of information and it's the capacity for logic. 
Now, the thing about IQ is that we have a great deal of, of attention and emphasis and, and value that is put on a person's IQ. And so I think that's where the term came from. You know, they look good on paper, right? So usually when companies are, are recruiting and hiring people, they're looking at that resume, they're looking at, you know, this person's capacity to, to it's like, it's like when, you, when you go to uni and, and, you, and you write your, your exams, you know, how are you paying attention during your courses so that you can keep that information and then bring it out and put it into an exam format. So this is a really valuable element of the human psyche, but it's not the only one. And I, I think that we have been in this loop collectively of giving this such a high level of importance that other aspects of human performance, human capacity, who you are being that is in this business, that's in this job, that's in this leadership role, that's in this company, that's running and making decisions about this company that affects other people's lives. It's, you know, there's so much more than, than this. This is a big part, but we've given this so much attention. We've given intelligence so much attention that we, I think I'm postulating that we've actually been uncomfortable with other aspects of being a human being and what that actually contributes to the growth and the rise of, of your business and your offerings. So I'm really motivated to, <laughs> to share this information with you today because I think what it does is it shines a light and it gets you thinking in a broader scope. So resiliency quotient couldn't be more timely right now with everything that everyone is experiencing. You know, the ability to adapt. Now I want to be cautious about adaptability because I, I, I feel that if we adapt too easily to restriction and limitation and, and lack, lack of freedom, lack of movement, lack of possibilities, lack of money, lack of business potential, then we actually can end up bringing ourselves down into a lower expectation. And I don't want you to do that. So Adaptability has to really be understood in context because if you adapt to the lower, if you adapt to the, to the lower expectation, I'm choosing my words very wisely, if you adapt to the lower expectation, then you're actually cutting yourself off from what else could be possible for your growth? Being agile certainly is important. You know, it's the, it's the ability to sum it up. It's the ability to bounce back. And so I would say that when you bouncing back, bounce higher. Don't just bounce back within the framework of what you've experienced before. Don't just bounce back to the level or the capacity that you've grown your company. Bounce higher. When you bounce back, use it as an opportunity to shed any of the, the limits, the blocks, the lower expectations. Just literally bounce through that to the next level. And so I want to give you that as a thought to really start asking that question when you're considering 
you know, as things are starting to open up now, we're starting to get into a little bit more flow here and there. So as you bounce back from the slowdown, ask your question, how can we bounce higher? What can we do to bounce beyond where we were before? That's the kind of thinking that I like my clients to entertain because that's the game changer right there. And then of course, you know, to have a sense of humor, <laughs> I'm telling you, there's been times where I've had no sense of humor. And then I find myself laughing at myself for not having a sense of humor. So really just, you know, there's a tactic in negotiations where you got to care, but not that much. Because when you white knuckle things, you actually block yourself. And it's the same with this whole sense of humor, laughability, you know, if you can allow yourself to just relax a little bit and really take advantage of this time in creative ways around what you're creating and building and reach into the future, like I said in the last webinar, and pull toward you that next level of growth and expansion, that's very powerful and empowering. All right, so, and then of course, you know, the next is alignment. I can't say enough about this. I mean, I can do a whole day program on each one of these quotients. And, you know, I can do a half a day on alignment. <laughs> but let me just sum it up this way. So, you know, in, in previous webinars, I've talked about meditating and the power that comes through having a consistent meditation practice. And so why would you invest in that? Why would you invest that time? Well, simply put, it increases your intuition. It increases your um, dialogue that you have between your ego mind and your higher mind. And that dialogue is so powerful because the ego enables you to like go through the motions of life and the higher mind is the GPS system that can guide you. So if you think that your business is over or you're not going to be able to bounce back, that if you're, if you're in that negative state of mind, you really need to commit to meditating every day because it will completely turn that negative state of mind on its head. And so the other part of alignment is, is focus. You know, when you're bouncing back, you, it's really key to focus on what you're creating. And if you don't know what that is yet, then call me. <laughs> but no, I'm serious. Like, if you don't know what that is yet, then absolutely it's going to require some, some mapping and, and a new approach to what you haven't thought of yet. You got to get out of your own way. You know, that's that saying, like, you got to get out of your own way because there's, there's thoughts and ideas and notions and images and goals that you haven't entertained in a long time, or maybe you just gave up on that could be brought to the table now. And you could really build off of those. Emotional quotient. So emotional quotient is the ability to understand other people and what motivates them. So important, don't you think, when you're growing a business to understand other people and what motivates them? As a leader, your, your job is to master human behavior, not just the emotional quotient, but all of it. Your job as a leader is to master human behavior. And I see all too many times this mistake in business functions and business operations. It's, it's this tactile approach. It's all about tactics. And the people that are implementing the tactics and that are moving that along, they don't, they don't understand their people is they don't understand themselves. I mean, that's, that's the long and the short of it because when you can monitor and manage your own emotions, then you totally get where people are at. You totally get what's going on with people. And that puts you in such a wonderful role and a place as a leader 
because you understand the drivers behind people's behavior. And then you're not triggered by it. You see, this is the key. When you have a high emotional quotient, you're not triggered by other people. You're able to step back as it were and have a cool head and just really be able to navigate the situation effectively. And then of course, you know, the state management part of it, it's really key because you can burn off a lot of time just being upset. And that time could be applied to launching, you know, this next step in your business growth. So if you've been finding yourself in a negative mental or emotional state through this whole thing, hey, you know, my heart goes out to you. I, I understand what you're experiencing. I'm working with clients every day that I'm working on this very piece with them at, at the same time as we're scaling their businesses. Yes, scaling their businesses. Not, we, we, we're not into survival, we're into thriving. Thrival, I wonder if that's a word. So we're gonna make that a word. Um, so it's about taking it to that next level. And so if you've been there, or maybe you're there now, it's okay, totally understand, can totally appreciate how that is for you. And so shake it off, you know, go for a walk, go for a run. Talk to someone that has a higher level of emotional quotient than you do to gain perspective because it'll put you into a different frame of mind. Now let's talk a little bit about spiritual quotient, which in my opinion is what's coming into play now bigger than it ever has before on the planet. And it's, it's not separate from your business. It's beyond your cognitive skills, of course, and it's beyond your emotional skills, absolutely. It's taking things to a whole other level. And I was having this dialogue yesterday with a client on this. So the concept was, okay, so you have these cognitive skills, you have a high IQ, and then you go about the business of cultivating your emotional skills, your emotional intelligence what is there from there? Well, then there's spiritual intelligence where you're understanding the humanity in everything. Remember in the beginning when I shared with you that I grew up on a farm and, you know, we lived off the land and we had animals and, you know, there's a spirituality to everything. There's a spirituality to you know, if you have a dog or a cat or any kind of pet, you know there's a spirituality to that relationship with that animal. As there is if you do any kind of outdoor activities, if you like to go camping, if you like to go hiking, if you like to go swimming in the ocean or in lakes, or maybe you're a surfer or you, you like to do kiting, there's a spiritual element to that. And as there is to your business. So right now, I'm prepping up the last parts of the um, edits on my book. And the big part of what I bring into the into the book is it's a book on how to scale your business is how to understand the spiritual aspect of your company and your people and even your offerings and to infuse into your day-to-day -day work habits a sense of spiritual awareness that you're in a creation mode that you're you're not just going through the motions that this is important this is how you're this is how you're living and spending your life it's your time you know, money comes, money goes, money comes back, time just goes. <laughs> so having a, you know, what can you offer humanity through this 
business and through your offerings and through your company's growth and through how you manage your teams and how you, you relate to your clients' needs. How can you, what, what, what is the spiritual aspect of that? And becoming more self-aware that people are more than just your worker bees. You know, they're more than just the title on their business card or on their door. They have energy. Everything is made up of energy. And that energy can either move you backwards or move you forwards. So when I'm working with, you know, clients that are running companies and teams, bringing this un conversation into the, into the whole process, because therein lies your value, you know, and it, it really needs to be woven into your value proposition. So just, I, I want you to start to ponder this because this is your time this is your time to really ponder this and to start to ask different questions, higher level questions, and bring them into your business growth and bring them, bring them to your people, especially bring it to your client base. They will appreciate that connection. And we all know what it feels like to connect at a heart level with someone. And then, and then we all know what it feels like not to, where you know that person is just, reading a script, <laughs> you know, they're just going through the motions and it's hollow and there's no sense of spirituality or spiritual connection to it. And so I should say that this quotient has nothing to do with religion. This is the spiritual energetic element to who you are and to who your people are on your team and and to who your clients are, and, and even to how the uh, marketplace, the energy in the marketplace responds to your offerings. So uh, I could go on and on about this because it's a whole training that's in our boot camp. but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this because I know Christos has some really juicy stuff for us. So one other thing... Um, Actually, I have one other thing, but I'm going to save it because I think I'd like to, this is a really good moment right here for you, Christos, to, to come into this and to bring your material up. And let me see if I can give you. All right. So let me share my screen. <clears throat> yeah. Do you, do you need permissions or did I set it up properly? No, I should be, I should be fine. Okay. Oops, perfect. No, it's disabled. Okay. So oh. let me do... How naughty. Okay. So new share now. Uh, let me go to in attendees, panelists, Christos. Okay. Share screen. Stop video. Oh, I'm just going to make you the host because it's quicker. All right. There you go. And then you can give it back to me when you're done. You good? Yes, let me wait. Yes, I think okay, I stop fantastic. you from screen sharing. That's okay. I can stop share. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay, so. Um, Deborah is talking about something extremely important today, which is the soft skills. And the soft skills get so neglected usually, or let me rephrase, traditionally, or let's say 20 years ago, business and uh, running a business was all about the hard skills. Uh, what, uh, what the employee can do, what the team member can do, just produce it and don't bring don't bring your emotions into this and then, you know, go home and deal with your emotions, that kind of thing. And of course, uh, we are evolving into a new reality for humanity. We are getting into a new paradigm where it's not just about the, the, the creativity part, the productivity part is not disconnected from who the human is. 
So let me actually start this. Uh, so when putting a team together, or actually let me put it this way. A lot of the times um, being in a managerial position or leadership position, we may experience team members not uh, participating enough, not being motivated enough and all these things. And there is a tendency those, in those cases to uh, go back to, well, this is your job, this is what you're supposed to do, that kind of, uh, of, of approach. But really, for me, the, the behavior and the productivity of a team is uh, based on top of a foundation, a foundation of principles that facilitate the right kind of communication that includes all the soft components that Deborah talked about. So the first thing is to keep in mind when putting a team together is that hiring for value. This is one of the most important things to keep in mind. Of course, it's good when creating a team for the team members to have the skills, but if they have their own material and the values, it's uh, better to hire them and train them a little bit to build the skills versus getting someone who has the skills that it doesn't align on values. Because values is what would be the foundation for the communication, for the openness, for the uh, collaboration in a team. And this is what will help the team grow as a team. Uh, it, it's great to have a very skilled person but if they're not by themselves anymore and they get placed in a team, if there is a misalignment, the whole team would hurt. And then the, the, next, the next element is to set the right expectations in the team environment, which this again creates this, uh, uh, this uh, foundation that fosters the right attitude and the, the productivity. So this, and again, these are things that uh, Deborah uh, has talked about in, the, in some of our previous uh, webinars here, a mindset of serving, caring about each other, caring about the team, caring about the customer and the world, a safe environment with no judgment or victimization, and also a culture of leadership which everyone is held high to behave a certain way. So these are the foundational components. These are the pillars in which it, it, when a team is put together there, it's much easier to leverage those soft skills. Because of course, if there is judgments of, of, or, or if uh, people uh, are not treated the right way, how do we expect them to ever bring the soft skills and bring those uh, components up front? And similarly, I can be the most emotionally intelligent person, but if the environment does not facilitate and doesn't promote openness between the team is not going to help. So basically what I I'm, uh, I'm want to uh, focus on and basically I want everybody to remember from this is that the, the foundation of, of building the team environment is very important for the soft skills and the emotional intelligence to flourish in them. And I have one more slide, which is really a copy paste essentially from the book Lost and Founder, a very nice book by Rand Fiskin. And these are the principles of teamwork, which is basically these elements that if creating a team and if cultivating a team, they will promote team work because obviously the, the purpose of putting together a team is for the team to produce, to produce results. So you see them here and I'm, I'm sure um, Deborah will share this uh, presentation. I'll go through, through them really quickly. Clarity and share understanding of goals. I know what, I'm, uh, what I have to do and uh, uh, why, why we are doing what we're doing. Uh, unity around each person's work. My tasks are clear and I understand how they fit in the big picture. Confidence that everybody will contribute. I, if I do my part, other people will also do my, uh, their part and we will all be successful. 
belief in surviving problems and mistakes that goes with what I said about no judgment. Uh, like if, if there is a mistake, this will not mean the, the end of the team or my work or the project or the company. And of course, a sense that we're all in this together. So these are the pieces that it's good to have there for then emotional intelligence to find fertile ground and facilitate the collaboration, the communication, and this inspiration and motivation that will help the team not just stay in that comfortable 70%, but people will really, all team members will really feel ready and excited to give 100%, to give 110% if necessary. And uh, Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, this makes me think of, um, so uh, we have a client that, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a medium-sized company, basically. And um, leadership team, you know, I think there's probably about 11 or so people on the leadership team. And so every year I facilitate their annual strategic plan. And um, so the first year was really, it was really intense, Christos, because even at that level, especially at that level, one would think that it's going to be a very sort of robust dialogue and, you know, we're rolling up our sleeves and we're really, people are contributing and it's just going to be me at the whiteboard and we're mapping and, you know, these, all these ideas are coming and concerns and there was nothing. They just, they just all sat there and nobody spoke. So I thought maybe at first they were just a little shy because I was new and this is the first time they had hired someone. They usually did it themselves. And I mean, I had to like practically stand on my head to get them to start to open up and share and dialogue things out and to learn to, to be able to express something that they really felt would make a difference in the growth of the company, but were kind of concerned that they'd get judged by their own, you know, their own team. Like we're like, it's just, so, so the second year I worked with them twice and they, they were very sort of like, toe in the water, got to kind of, you know, ease my way into this. So the second year we did two set, we did two strategy sessions. And so, you know, I really was having to like pull them along, but by the, by the third time we were together, they were more forthcoming, if you will. And, you know, what I understood through this experience is that that's just how they were with each other all the time. So, you know, to your point around unity, around each other, each person's work and confidence in everyone contributing equitably. I mean, we are hardwired as human beings to express and to bring to the table ideas and our imaginations, there's a lot going on in our imagination. And so I feel like the soft skills part of business growth really gets a bad rap, you know? Don't you think it gets diminished and it should be the number one priority? It is, it is definitely neglected very much. And part of it is I would say cultural hardwiring that comes, cultural stereotypes sure. that comes from the families, etc. So we bring cultural stereotypes into work about what work is supposed to be. And then of course is... That's a good point. Say that uh, last part again, what work is supposed to be. 
Yeah, exactly. And then there is, uh, unfortunately, it's, uh, teams are comprised by humans and we all have, you know, limitations and egos and insecurities. And if they're not kept in check, they can poison the environment. It is yes. a muscle after all. Uh, vulnerability, openness, uh, honesty, authenticity. It's a muscle. It gets to be practiced and, uh, uh, grow, you know, gets get stronger over time. It's true. So, yes. And, you know, so I, I share these examples not to be critical. I share these examples because I'm sure there's people on here that are, have experienced that or been that. You know, I remember when I first started um, as a professional speaker, you know, getting what I felt inside to come out my way was my, my biggest hurdle. Like I could say the words and I could deliver the words in a way that was supposed to be professional, you know, and what I thought a professional speech was supposed to come across like, because, you know, you, you watch other people, right? You watch other speakers or you watch other people on your team dealing with challenging times in a certain way. And, and so the key here is to bring you out, like to bring out your personality, to bring out your authentic self and contribute that to the team because that's really the hard wiring that is itching to come forth. It's, uh, it's up to each of us. It's up to the, to the leadership to set the tone. But even if the leadership doesn't set the tone, each of us can do something. And uh, I think yeah. that's very important. I'll share an example as well. This past weekend, I was attending a training and we were in this small group, we were uh, five or six of us, and we were supposed to take turns in sharing what we think about the training or do some exercises together. And this one uh, lady, now, mind you, we didn't know each other before the training started. So we've only met each other a couple of times, you know, that was like, by the third time we get together in this small group, I noticed that this lady always goes last, mm. right? And so I say, I will go after her. I decided. So I'm there waiting and there's this silence when it's like someone else has to start talking and there's this silence and to, like, we have this standoff we're looking at each other. <laughs> I mean, it's through Zoom, of course, right? You understand? But... Uh, That's brilliant. Um, and of course, she goes, she goes before last. And then I tell her, well, first of all, I told her, I acknowledge you for not going last. And then imagine if you had we were five, six people in this group. Imagine if you have five people around you that each of them was determined to go after you. You would be going first. So this is the kind of team spirit and team environment and putting together a team that will make the difference. And this is if, if not everybody in the team would think that, then this is where the, the leader comes in and takes everybody aside and tell them, which I didn't do, of course, but in that case, okay, okay, team, today, nobody will go before Deborah, for instance, right? And now that gives this person the opportunity. Now the team grows together. So there's all these little things, which is, again, mm -hmm. read, the, read, the, read the signs, read the, uh, the not obvious verbal communication about the person, how they engage, how they feel, where they are at that very moment. Yeah. This is so important. It totally is. And to, and I think this is a common assumption. There's a common assumption that when someone has a big title that they they know everything or that they have certain skills. And of course we should assume that they're in a, a high level leadership role. We should assume that they are this full package kind of thing. Right. But it's not always true. And 
I always jokingly say that the number one fear that every CEO has is and people finding out that he or she doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> uh huh. And, you know, I say that with love and affection, but it's true. You know, it's, um, it's a, it's a dance and every leadership, every, and this is why a lot of people don't want to lead because it's a big responsibility. So I, I also think that, you know, we could take this, we can chunk this down into being a leader in your life. It's a big responsibility to choose to live a larger life. That's, yeah. that's a big responsibility. And so if you can imagine, you've got people sitting around a boardroom table and you know there's this element of fitting in and not being seen as too much of an outlier but yet being enough of one that you get the you get the promotions and you get the raises you know it's a it's a dance it's a dance and i want to i want to make a i want to make a claim that with everything we're experiencing right now in the world, that one of the massive blessings that's coming out of this is people, and I'm generalizing because of just to make a point, but people are gonna start coming out more in terms of bringing more of who they are to the table. And you should, because that's what really makes a team shine. And you know, I've, I've worked with some companies like, in fact, I just saw an email this morning from someone on a, on a team and it's, they're a, a commercial industrial lighting company. And um, this is what makes this company so special is the quirky people, the people on the team that have little quirky things about themselves that they express and they bring to the table. And it makes that company just shine, you know? And we were actually able to, in nine months, we were actually able to triple their sales in nine months. And we didn't add anybody to the team. In fact, we lost a person, a guy quit. And it's because of, it's an environment, the CEO, has made a point of fostering an environment that is safe for her people to bring all of their selves to the table. It's cool. It's really cool to see that. And um, that's really what I think you're seeing here. Yeah, definitely. And people, a lot of times, miss misinterpret um, the difference between uh, decision making and contribution. Um, mm. Decision making, yes, but, uh, the idea in, eventually the team, the CEO is the one that eventually carries the weight of the decisions. So the ultimate decision is with the CEO. So for me, the way I see it, and especially in, in small companies, this is more obvious, and I think this is the paradigm we're moving towards. The titles facilitate the decision-making process, but not the, uh, let's say, responsibility of its member to participate and to take a stand for things. Right. Yes. No, I agree with you. And it, that becomes a culture. That becomes a culture. And that's values. I mean, we could take this thing full circle back to what's driving behavior are the values. Most people don't know that. Most people think that their behavior is driven by their goals. We could do a whole program on that. 
you know, I do actually. And so, you know, goals don't drive behavior, values do. And when, it ta- when we're talking about alignment, getting your values and your goals into alignment with each other is the difference between hitting your numbers and not. Yeah. Spinning your wheels and not hating your work and not. And I feel that that's where the humanity part of it comes into play. So, because values, goals are like these tangible, measurable, you know, all that, like they're, you can, you can see them on a spreadsheet, right? But values, values are what we're talking about here. They're the intangible, they're the unseen side or unseen framework to the individual. And it's time, it's really time to bring humanity back into the business world, to bring the spirit of doing business, being about being of service back into how we relate to what we're doing, you know, whether you're getting up and you're working with your team via this platform or you're actually getting in your car and you're driving to your office, going with a a level of enthusiasm and appreciation because you get to go there that day and contribute. You know, inspiration, enthusiasm, appreciation and contribution. And then the roof blows off of the potential of that company. I think that's what we're really talking about here. Yep. Yeah. So, so thank you. So let me, uh, we'll do some Q and A here at the end. I want to share. Yeah, let me, I'll make you host again. Okay. And thank you for your patience, everybody that that's watching and we're like toggling back and forth. I could, I could truly do a better job of setting this up in advance. Honest. I get it. Um, so I own that. <laughs> All right. So there's one more quotient I want to share. And this is a biggie. And, and then I'll get to your I'll get to your questions. So please send me your comments. If you have something going on right now in your company that you need some help with, put it in the chat. And maybe that's where we could take this. Uh, We had some comments, you know, keep doing the webinars. So um, maybe that's something we could do next time, Christos, is we could do case study where somebody offers up something that they're having a bit of a challenge with right now. And we could, uh, we could help them unpack that and maybe come up with some solutions. That would be fun. Yeah, actually, that's a great idea. I would love to do that. So let's, let's, do, I, and then I, I have an amazing, it fits right in with the topic I have for next, next week's webinar. So let me tell you the next quotient. So the next quotient is systems quotients. Now I have to tell you that from a um, R&D perspective, what we're experiencing right now on the planet is perfect R&D for me because I've always had a deep interest in human systems. And um, probably for about the last 15 years, I've done this really deep dive into human systems and how we go through these processes, these change processes over time and what the, what the triggers are and the markers are and and how it impacts, you know, how we live our lives and how we relate to one another and, and even how it impacts emerging markets. For instance, I did a course on this, actually I did a, a talk on this in Geneva that women are an emerging market. And so that kind of thing is actually a human systems change process. So 
think about this for just a moment where when it comes to adaptability, we have found a way to adapt, to continue to do business, and it's this platform. Now, how we don't know yet, we can, we can assume and we could, we could speculate, but we don't know yet how that's going to play out and expand and grow and impact over the next year, five years, 10 years. So not just how it's going to impact our business growth and changes in the market, but how it's going to impact the choices of how of, that people make in how they're willing to spend their time. Because this has really opened up a whole new realm of possibilities of how work can get done without spending an hour on the freeway, bumper to bumper in a commute, without missing your child's uh, homework or play or soccer game or just cuddle time, you know, or, or how you even spend your whole day. And I did, a, uh, I did a, a IGTV on my Instagram on this topic about a week ago about how, actually it was on LinkedIn, it was on my LinkedIn. So if you're not a member of my LinkedIn, please connect with me um, about how, you know, we've been conditioned that you should be at the office at a certain time, you should be working at a certain time and you shouldn't stop producing until a certain time. This is your window for work. But I would say that we all know productivity is like this, right? Throughout the day, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. And if we're forcing ourselves just for the sake of like, I'm marking time because this is when I'm told I'm supposed to be producing, you're not really producing. You're pretending to produce because that's what you're supposed to be doing because that's the time block you're given. And so what's happening now is people are realizing that you, you only have whatever window of time of productivity in you and then you have to have a break. Some people can lock in and go for hours. Some people, it's every 90 minutes. You know, personally, I'm a 90 minute kind of person. You know, I can, I can focus in, zero in, knock out 90 minutes, and then I got to get up and walk away from my desk. And one of the things I learned a long time ago was to not beat myself up for needing to walk away and take that little short break. And this is what people are learning, that your creativity only goes so far and then you have to walk away and you have to recalibrate and get that inspiration or get that flow, like go for a walk. Like for instance, yesterday I made my lunch, I took it to the roof and I read something while I ate and then I actually had a little 15 minute siesta in the sun. And I felt like a million bucks after. Got out of the air conditioning because it's hot here in Southern California right now. It just temperature just went up, got out of the air conditioning, got out of the fake lighting, went outside, there was birds chirping, had a little siesta, felt like a million bucks after and just like, boom, plowed through a whole bunch of work for the rest of the afternoon. And this is the key, you have to understand your own rhythms. So systems quotients take that into consideration. And human beings are going through probably the biggest systems change ever. And there's there's a lot of negatives to that as well that we don't need to go into because I want to really focus on the positives and there's a lot of blessings in that. So we're going to pick this up uh, next week. And before we jump into some of the questions, I want to share with you this next webinar is what does it take to lead That's so funny. 
in a reset world, I think I could have languaged that better. So what is it that it takes to lead in a reset world? And so for those of you that are leading teams, that are re um, inventing your company, reinventing your offerings, that's what next week's webinar is all about. And let me just share with you um, a course that we have that's early June. So June 5th and 6th is the Business Accelerator Bootcamp. Now, if things open up here in California, I'm gonna do this live at our office. It's a small group. We typically only have less than 12 people and I, I prefer it that way because it's a really high touch program with a manual that you get to have and use for the next year in your business growth. And then we'll also do a simulcast where people can zoom in quite literally and be part of that program. So here's the assessment. If you want to get a sense of where your business is, go to this tiny URL, the bit.ly biz accelerate 2020, fill out the, the assessment and, just pay attention to what thoughts come, what ideas come, how you realize that you could take things to another level. And, and then, you know, I'm happy to go through that assessment with you if you want some feedback on it. And it's free, you know, it's, it's there for you to assess your business. And here's the programs that we're rolling out in this month. So the boot camp, the shift change and heal your money story course, which is all about your relationship to money. Everybody's got a relationship to money. And depending on your relationship to money determines how much money you receive. So if you have a relationship to money that is limited, then your receiving is going to be completely in alignment with what that relationship is. And I show you how to break through that. The other one is the Mind Mastery Revenue Accelerator Masterclass. So it's connecting the dots between mastering your thoughts and your emotions and your spiritual quotient with tangible in the bank revenue. And this one is the Communication Self Mastery and Negotiation Online Course is a hybrid of the Neuro Linguistic Programming Certification courses I used to teach. We used to certify people in practitioner level, master practitioner level, and trainers training. And so I had some requests from women working in uh, the construction industry that were really wanting to be able to navigate that world and negotiate better deals for themselves, better salaries, higher level of decision-making and authority within their companies, and to really not let sort of a imbalance in terms of gender in a particular industry throw them off their game. So the self-mastery is a big part of that. So yeah, so those are coming up and um, very excited. So next week, and I'll get those out to you guys via email. So next week, definitely leading in a reset world. And um, let's go into some questions, shall we? Did you, what do we have here? So Q&A. So yeah, I think I addressed everything. Fantastic. Well, good stuff. Did you have any closing remarks that you'd like to make, Christos? Um... I can come up with something. <laughs> I think the main, the main closing remark and to be saying this in all the webinars is that we're entering, we have entered the new era where each of us uh, has to come from the shadows and the, pink, uh, the background and really take a stand for something and contribute uh, in order to, to advance humanity essentially forward and this doesn't mean if i'm this is not about i'm the uh, if i'm the leader so i have to be the one that be the i'll be the uh, the manager no no everyone within ourselves 
if we have these values that you mentioned earlier, and if we live our lives based on these values and move, for, move forward like this, then we contribute in the result. So I think that's the, the, the parting words from me. That's um, fantastic. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll cover this off next week. And, you know, something occurred to me when it's interesting, you know, when, when we, we, I mean, all of us human beings, when we say things, sometimes we say things because we've heard it before and it's, it's, it's in our mind, but we don't really, we don't really connect to what it means or what it could mean. And so there's a phrase going around right now, to your point, um, you were saying like coming forward and, and showing up differently. And there's a phrase going around uh, called the new normal. And I, I want to just say that I wanna, I'm going to cover that off next week in the webinar because first of all, first of all, and most importantly, there is no new normal, okay? We are creating this as we are evolving and moving ourselves forward. So there is no new normal. That's just a catchphrase that someone invented. And I can appreciate that, you know, on some level it might make people feel better but doesn't make me feel better. And I don't think it should make you feel better either. I think the last thing you want is a new normal because if you look at the word normal, normal is really about stagnation. So you don't want a new level of stagnation. What you want is to thrive. And I wanna leave that as a parting thought for today because that's where we're going with this. And that's why we're doing these webinars is so that you can gain the tools and the inspiration and the enthusiasm to make the changes in your life and in your business to thrive. So that's, that's all for me right now. I love it. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. And we will see you next week, May 12th, 10 a.m. Pacific. And um, have a blessed day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, I see some questions.